Greetings, I'm Ben, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to fit a two variable latent variable model or a measurement model or a confirmatory factor analysis using the Levon package for R. So, the first thing you want to make sure that you do is install and load the Levon package. So, if you haven't already installed it, just go to the little install button in R Studio. Um, and then make sure that you've clicked Levon. If it's not clicked, it'll give you the error message that it can't find the function. Once you have done that, your first job is to describe the measurement model that you want to fit. And we can name this whatever we want, so we'll call this model one, but it's an arbitrary name. And in this example, I'm just going to fit two latent variables, and each one's going to be a fairly uh, have a, a relatively small number of indicators. Um, so pretty simple. The first variable I want to fit is a variable called attribution of malevolence. And so I'm going to name it AOM. One thing I'll point out is that I'm using this uh, common uh, symbol in R, this connective tissue, you know, it says, okay, I want you to attach whatever follows uh, to this name. So note that, you know, I just typed in that vector. And then note that the measurement model description needs to be fully included in the inverted commas here. So uh, once I have these inverted commas uh, after the little arrow, I can say, all right, I'm going to name this latent variable AOM for attribution of malevolence. That's an arbitrary name that I've given it here. I could give it whatever name I want. Now I'm going to tell it which indicators in my data set will comprise the attribution of malevolence variable. And to do that, you use equal sign tilde. So this equal sign tilde is the command in R that tells it whatever follows this um, are going to be the items that comprise the attribution of malevolence variable. And these have to correspond to the names of your variables in your data set. So in my data set, I named these variables AOM1, AOM2, and AOM3. And then the second uh, latent variable I'm going to fit in this example is a variable that measures people's support for political compromise. And so we'll call that, we can call it COMP for compromise, or we could call it support for compromise. And then again, the equal sign tilde. And in my data set, the items that comprise this variable are named COMP1, COMP2, COMP3, and COMP4. So you see we have one latent variable comprised of three items and one latent variable comprised of four items. Uh, in each case, the name we give it here is arbitrary. We use the equal sign tilde to indicate the items that follow this symbol will be what comprise the latent variable. And these names are the names in my data file that I've already imported. So this is all you need to do to describe the model. If you run that, you know, you see over here, now I've created an object named model one that includes my model description. To fit that measurement model, I'm going to create another object called fit one. And again, this is an arbitrary name. You can call it whatever you'd like. And I'm going to use a function from Levon. And you can use the SEM function in Levon. See, you see SEM auto populates and it says in Levon. Or you can use the CFA function in Levon. And in this instance, they'll do the same thing. Now I need to tell it the object that I want it to run the confirmatory factor analysis on. And that object is named model one. So you just type the object name from above, and then comma. Then you need to tell it the name of the data file that you want to use. And so I named my data file Ben. You know, you might have named your data DF or data or you know something to do with your project. Uh, because I was being cheeky, I named my data Ben. Now the model will run with just these commands. So see, I ran the model. Um, and you know it says okay I ran the model now if you want a summary of the model it's as simple as saying summary fit one so I'm saying all right I just ran this um, confirmatory factor analysis on model one please give me a summary of that and uh, when you ask for the summary you see it gives you um, the estimator the number of parameters the number of observations it gives you the um, degrees of freedom for your model, the chi-square for your model, 
um, and then it gives you your uh, parameter estimates here. So this has the loadings on your latent variable here, right? And then this has the covariances of the latent variables, and then you have your residual variances and your latent variances. Now, there are a couple of options that I think improve this. Um, the first is I don't prefer the marker variable method of um, identification where you fix the first loading to 1.0. That's default in most SEM software, but I prefer the fixed factor method. So to do that, you just say, I want you to use the standardized latent variable method of identification. And so to do that, you just type std.lv equals t. That's the standardized latent variable. The other thing that you can tell it to do is if you have missing data in the items that you're using to estimate the latent variables, you can recapture that missing data with a full information maximum likelihood uh, imputation. And to do that, you just type missing equals in quotes FIML, FIML for full information maximum likelihood. Now, I don't think this data has any missing values, but we'll type that all the same. So if we run it now, you'll see first of all, up top, it says um, number of observations, 606, number of missing patterns, one. And I think that it says one if there's no missing data. Um, but uh, you'll also notice now I have loadings for all three of those indicators and for all four of those indicators. And you'll see that the intercept for the latent variables is zero and the variance for the latent variables is one. Uh, which, which corresponds to the fixed factor method. Now we have uh, covariance um, here and um, loadings for each of the indicators. Now, uh, that is basically what I like to do for my um, estimator. I guess one other thing that I like to do is you can use a, do I need quotes here? You can use a robust maximum likelihood estimator or different kinds of estimators. And so a robust estimator will, let's see, where does it say? Oh yeah, well that just says estimator ML. Hmm. Oh yeah, and then here we have the scaling correction factor. Yuan Bentler correction. So that's what you get that um, correction for um, for non normality if you use the robust maximum likelihood estimator. So sometimes I include that if uh, my data doesn't meet the assumptions of maximum likelihood estimation. Okay, other things you can do. You can ask for the standardized solution. Standardized equals true. And what that does is it gives you, and let's see if I can make this a little bit even bigger. Okay, and what that'll give you is the standardized uh, loadings and the standardized uh, residuals here. And so I find that these standardized loadings are the easiest to interpret uh, because they're all on a universal metric from zero to one. And so, you know, we see that the loadings for the three attribution of malevolence variables are uh, quite good, and uh, the loadings for the support for political compromise variable are also uh, strong. We see that these variables are negatively correlated, um, suggesting that people who have higher attribution of malevolence to the other political party have less support for political compromise. And then you can see the residuals um, are generally uh, relatively small. Okay, finally, you know, the other thing that you may be wondering is what about my uh, CFA, what about my TLI, what about my RMSEA and my SRMR? Well, you can get all of that information uh, just by in your summary line typing fit equals T. And so that'll give you your model fit data. Uh, so if we go up here, uh, still. I always um, enlarge the texts to make videos and then it makes things not fit neatly in my screen. Wow, that looks 
I really don't like the look of that at all. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller if you'll allow it. I like that better. Okay, so then, yeah, you can see here it gives me more, um, more model fit. It gives me my CFI and my TLI. Um, it gives me my RMSEA with the 90% uh, confidence interval of the RMSEA. Notice also because I used MLR, it gives me a robust RMSEA um, and it gives me a robust CFI and TLI. Um, and then it gives me my SRMR down here. So now I have all the model fit that, that I'm looking for. So um, that is how you use Levon to do confirmatory factor analysis. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. The main thing you need to know is the equal sign tilde is how you tell it which items go with which latent variable. And then it's just a matter of, you know, okay, the command is CFA. I need to tell it the model to fit and the data set to use to fit the model. If I want to fix the latent variances to one instead of using the marker variable method, this is the option. If I want to impute missing data, this is the option. If I want to use a robust maximum likelihood estimator, this is the option, or you can use um, you know, other estimators as well. And then when you ask for your summary, you can just say, oh, give me a summary of that uh, fit model. Or you can say, give me a summary that includes the standardized solution and the model fit. And Levon has a lot of other excellent options. There's a lot of complexity that you can add on to here, but um, I love the elegance and the sim simplicity of Levon. And I think this little paragraph right here to fit a CFA, um, you know, it, uh, it can't be beat. So cheers to Yves Roussel for developing and maintaining Levon. Truly uh, a wonderful stats package and worth learning R, uh, in my opinion, uh, just the fact that Levon exists makes learning R entirely worthwhile. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. Um, feel free to let me know if there are other things that you'd like to know how to do using um, Levon, and uh, maybe I'll make a video. So thanks.